In this part two of Blender animation workflows, we're gonna polish our blink. I'm Luciano and welcome to the adventures of Lollipop Man. We're gonna pick it up right where we left off. We had our animation in step poses and now we're just gonna spline everything and get it to the finish line. If you like this channel, remember to like and subscribe or maybe pick up something from my stores down in the description below. Let's get on it. I'm going to switch to the graph editor with control tab. I'm just going to select all of the controllers we have here and make sure that they all go into Bezier, which is basically turning all of this into splines. So first of all, I'm going to do that, T, and then you, we only care about constant, linear, and Bezier. Constant is for doing step mode, and now Bezier is going to be all in spline mode. Now we'll, we'll be able to change uh, the curves and the tangents. Another thing that I want to turn off is the coloring of the groups, which I really don't like. Uh, I, I think it should be default. Sadly, you can't turn this on off forever. Um, trying to get it to be an, an option with the entire blender. So once you turn it off, once it stays off. But at this point, you have to do it on a per scene basis. Already worked in a scene that has it on and you turn it off, it will stay off for that scene. But if you start a new one, then it will start on. So this is cool. Uh, it's not too bad, it just needs polishing. First of all, I figure we'll just work on the ones that we've animated pretty much. So I'm just going to select all of these guys here. I'm going to deselect this one because we don't really need to touch those. Yeah, those ones, goodbye, and this one's goodbye, and this one's goodbye. And so let's shift H and select and hide them all. Out of these ones, uh, oh, I missed that one, H. So shift H is uh, hide all of the ones that are unselected and H is hide the one selected. And now, so for instance, I can, you can see that all of these ones, when you rotate them, they don't do much really. This one does nothing. This one does a little bit, uh, nothing. So I reckon we could actually get rid of all the rotations because I don't think we deliberately did much to the rotations. For that, we have a filter in here which we can go rotation. And if I press the plus button, I can expand this so you can see that we're only seeing the rotations. I'm going to uh, make this big by control uh, spacebar. You can make any window full screen, which I love. So we'll select them all. Yeah, it's all rotations. And we're also in quaternions, which, which, which like it's, it's okay, but not perfect. And um, and we could potentially just get rid of the keyframes and just done. We can also delete the channels directly, uh, but this should be enough. And now we can also get rid of all the scales. Scales. Scale. And so let's do this. Yeah, all of them. So if I press X here, it just deletes the entire channel. And, and keeps the, the value at the place that you are right now. So that's, that's, that's cool, that's easy. And we certainly don't, did I, did I delete more than I should have? Well, yes, I did actually, I don't know how. So let's just delete scales. Oh yeah, that's the problem. If I delete them from here, I, I also delete the entire animation for each bone. So I don't want to do it here, that's what I want to select them all. I just want to make sure that they're all here, so they're all visible. And then I'll delete them from here. And that should be fine. So now I get my locations back. Um, what else do I want to do with this? I think that's all, that's all right. Probably only want to keep only the, the Y locations because we, all we did is moving them up and down uh, mostly. Uh, but we'll leave it like this for now, I think. But you can see that they all are moving just up and down. This one might be doing something weird there. It's basically all up and down. Uh, the moves to the side are because we added those uh, little eye darts. Uh, and the eye controller has a little bit of influence. I mean, when the, uh, the eyeball rotates, it has a little bit of influence over the eyelids. Uh, so that's producing those side-to-side -side movements. But besides that, we just did up and downs. 
So we can we can potentially go X and then just select them all and then go back here and you see for instance let's grab this guy. Yeah, that guy kind of goes in a little bit. Okay, let's leave the locations in X and Y, but we can get rid of the ones in Z because those are like in and out, so they shouldn't be moving basically. Ah, we got a clean graph editor now. Um, we did I delete everything now with all of what we need? Yeah, exactly. Just Y and X should be fine now. Um, cool, so we're ready to get get going. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do, I'm, because <clears throat> this controller drives this one and this one, and this same with these two, about this one, and in this case, in the in the eyebrow case, it's this one, it's driven by those two, like their positions, like this one gets affected by them. So we want to polish the firstly these ones, and then get on with the secondaries that get affected by those first ones. Right, these ones we could do at any time basically, just because they are not like no matter which other controller I touch, they oh okay. So we want to do these ones, these ones, these ones, and so these ones also come in last basically, as we get all the other ones ready. So let's try and start with this eye. I want to make sure that that it starts slightly slow. I guess we could start with this side slightly earlier than this side, closing and then opening. Uh, even if it's, it's this one is smaller, it's just gonna be like the lazy eye. So let's start with this guy, go here, just start grabbing the curves. A little thing I like to do is because right now, as you can see, both of my curves are active, it makes it a little bit complicated. I just want to go and only select curve keyframes. And the other one gets kind of grayed out, so I can't select it and so, we want to push this guy a little bit. Actually, we can hide that. And then accelerate a lot. Scale that. Maybe I went a bit too slow. And then smack into the lower eyelid. Continue going a little bit more. And then start going out first, slowly, and then surely get over here. Smack. We, we will reshape this a little bit, obviously. Smack, down. So let's do the, 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 the lower lid. Uh, I kind of want to leave this starting slow again. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Actually, no, let's leave that for the other eye. In fact, we can do it a little bit sharper even. And then the lower one, I'm going to grab it again. Boom, boom. So it, it's going to take longer though. I'm going to just move it a little bit. There we go. Mac against the top one. And then start pushing down but then when the top one starts going back up i'm just going to duplicate this keyframe put it a little bit so it kind of gets pulled by the upper lid when it goes up and then it just goes back to its place okay let's fix the ones around them because I, i'm kind of dying with those shapes sometimes so when he goes down, maybe we can, for instance, make it just a little tad curved so it doesn't get that sharp edge there. Uh, here I'm screwed. I think it's part of my weight, my terrible weight painting. You get the idea. So yeah, should be fine. And then we can push it. Actually, let's just drag this part up so like it doesn't want to close the eye. And then this one, we can drag it down. So we get that that little like shape like that. And then boom. And then we can start opening 
that slightly there. I don't know how good that's gonna look. And then this one is kind of dragging back and then they get there. Room. Boop. I think that should be backwards. It's it's gonna look better if we do it backwards. So we can probably just grab all of these guys here, sit down in the middle, and then scale x minus one. Actually, good time for using the pivot to the cursor. Scale x minus one. So they will pivot around him. So it goes down, boom. Yeah, that's better, I think. And then this guy, maybe we can delay all of this one more frame. Yeah, there we go. So it's very, very tiny detail um, that in play you can barely see it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm still too exaggerated with it, but it starts adding a little bit of uh, less mechanicalism. I don't know how to say it. Um, just feels a little bit more organic that it, it's not the entire lead that goes into like that. So I want to make it just a tad softer. Dun, dun, dun. So it's so it's there, just, just don't see it, but you feel it a tiny bit. And then both of them here. And then shift D and just make sure that they're getting more shaped like, yeah, I like it. It's looking good. So let's do the, let's do the other eye. I mean the other eye. Let's do the eyebrow, I guess. I can do the entire eye and the eyebrow. And then just the rest of the other eye and eyebrow could be potentially better. up. So let's do this. So first uh, we want the eye to start and so I'm going to push this keyframe. Actually, I'm going to push the entire eyebrow, maybe one frame later. So that those guys start moving, then as they start moving, they pull in and the eyebrow starts moving down. And so this guy kind of feels like he goes down more than it should. Applicants is to do the centers. Okay. And then we also probably want these guys to kind of stay. Actually, that's okay. Let's extend the E out for it to come back. And then maybe make this one a little bit softer. Yeah. Something like so. Again, we're trying to do decent quality animation in a couple of minutes and I'm not the fastest, not the best one. So so I'm just going to do the best I can in this in this half an hour. I'm just going to try and do the best I can. We can also push the middle one to go slightly earlier than the other ones. So it feels like that middle eyebrow is the one driving, like the middle part of the eyebrow is driving the rest of the animation. And then pull it down enough. Uh, Okay, that's not too bad. I do think that we're pushing it too much down and I'm going to show you there's a, this little add-on that I'm using which uh, replicates a lot of the functionality from uh, Animbot and so you can get this for free. The link is going to be down in the comments below. It's a very cool add-on, works fairly well. So I'm going to scale right and so this is going to scale each curve on to their right frame so it makes it makes really easy to scale the animation for instance in this way I'm going to I'm also wanting to do this push these guys a little bit later so they start 
this one's a bit early. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Yeah, something, something like this. We can grab a little bit this guy here. I'm not gonna touch any of the other controllers. Like these ones, we could add a tiny bit, but uh, given that it's a blink, like unless you were trying to squint and blink, uh, but like a regular blink usually happens more, more in this area and the the eyebrows. Uh, not that it's not that forced, I guess. Again, uh, around the the rest of the area. My my supervisor could be super angry about what I'm saying, but this is what I figure out by hearing and seeing other people. So yeah, yeah it's not terrible. I would say the, this one is a little bit too sharp. And there it is, too sharp. Just pushing a little bit late. Yeah, you see now now that area is it's like arriving slightly more slow and this guy here maybe we could give it yeah something a little bit of a curve to there Ooh. yeah this one now feels like it's kind of like Lagging too much. Yeah, and it completely freezes there. Maybe we should keep him going a little bit down or and then have him blow out a little bit more. So we could potentially just create another keyframe here. Boom, I think it's done. Let me know if you liked this video by hitting the like button or maybe if you didn't like it, just let me know in the comments below why you didn't like it because that gives me feedback to improve in the next one. The whole point of this video was more about showing you how to use Blender's graph editor and curves and keyframes and tools 
uh, to use it to their advantage with a simple exercise like a blink. In the future, we're gonna do more like this where we dive into walk cycles and run cycles and fun stuff like that. Remember to like and subscribe and see me next time. Mm -hmm.